You booked a sunny Verbo ski chalet with endless views of snow-covered peaks. A stove. Good afternoon and happy Founders Day. We would like to welcome you to our all school mass live from the St. Vincent St. Mary Chapel. We are sending out a special welcome to all of our alumni and family and memorial scholarship donors who are watching from home. I am Lily Knox and I am a recipient of the Christine Clark Memorial Scholarship and the Jim Kelly Memorial Scholarship. Today we remember Blessed William Joseph Chaminade who founded the Mary and his family in 1801, the Society of Mary in 1817. He was born in 1761 and died on this date in 1849. Today, members of the Society of Mary are in ministry throughout the world. In 2000, Pope John Paul II declared Chaminade blessed. On this day, as a school community, let us recommit ourselves to living out our Marianist heritage today and throughout the year. Let us pray for each other and all members of the family of Mary. Today, as we... Um, celebrate Blessed Shamad. We recognize the many generous donors who have provided almost 40 years of scholarships to the thousands of St. Vincent St. Mary students. Upon them in all of our community, we bestow this blessing. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the many gifts you have bestowed upon us, especially for the many scholarship donors and friends of the St. Vincent St. Mary family. We thank you for the opportunity we have to serve this school community. We thank you for the men and women who have gone before us and have contributed to the educational mission that has brought us to this day. We ask you for the guidance of your spirit upon our work. May our work contribute to the fulfillment of our mission for this and future generations. Now please stand as we welcome Father David Blind. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we gather on this 
amazing day for us, a day of celebration for this very school and the heart of who we're called to be. Uh, it's a day that we remember what it means to, to listen to the voice of Christ over all the other voices and all the other authorities. There's only one authority, that is Jesus Christ himself. So those times that we have failed to remember this, those times that we have sinned, let us ask our God to forgive us and may we be prepared to receive the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. You nourish us with your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who alone are holy, and without whom no one is good, command, we pray, that through the intercession of blessed William Joseph Chaminade, that we may be numbered among those who do not deserve to be deprived of your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel took 3,000 men picked from all Israel and went in search of David and his men and in the direction of wild goat crags. When he came to the sheepfolds along the way, he found a cave, which he entered to relieve himself. David and his men were occupying the inmost recesses of the cave. David's servants said to him, This is the day of which the Lord said to you, I will deliver your enemy into your grasp. Do with him as you see fit. So David moved up and stealthily cut off the end of Saul's mantle. Afterward, however, David regretted that he had cut off the end of Saul's mantle. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, as to lay a hand on him, for he is the Lord's anointed. With these words, David restrained his men and would not permit them to attack Saul. Saul then left the cave and went on his way. David also stepped out of the cave, calling to Saul, My lord, the king. When Saul looked back, David bowed to the ground in homage and asked Saul, Why do you listen to those who say, David is trying to harm you? For you see for yourself today that the Lord just now delivered you into my grasp in the cave. And I had some thought of killing you, but I took pity on you instead. I decided I will not raise a hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed and a father to me. Look here at the end of your mantle, which I hold, since I cut off the end of your mantle and did not kill you. See and be convinced that I plan no harm and no rebellion. I have done you no wrong. Unto me down to take my life. The Lord will judge between me and you, and the Lord will ex exact justice from you in my case. I shall not touch you. The old proverb says, from the wicked comes forth wickedness. So I will take no action against you, against whom you are on campaign, O king of Israel. Whom are you pursuing, a dead dog or a single flea? The Lord will be the judge. He will decide between me and you. May he see this and take my part and grant me justice beyond your reach. Then David finished saying these things to Saul. Saul answered, is that your voice, my son David? And Saul wept aloud. Saul then said to David, You are in the right rather than I. Great is the generosity you have showed me today. When the Lord delivered me into your grasp, and you did not kill me. For a man meets his enemy, does not he send him away unharmed? May the Lord reward you generously for what you have done this day. And now I know that you shall surely be king and that sovereignty over Israel shall come into your possession. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went up the mountain and summoned those whom he wanted, and they came to him. They appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, that they might be with him, and he might send them forth to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. He appointed the twelve, Simon, whom he named Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, whom he named Benergis, that is, sons of, of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Always know where you came from because it'll tell you where you are and where you need to go. Always know where you came from. It'll tell you where you are and where you need to go. See, I, I was a little bit of a disadvantage, I must say. I was excited um, to come here to St. Vincent St. Mary uh, because I wanted to have a Mass this year. And having moved away from the Akron area, I dare anyone do such a thing. Um, but I grew up in Cargo Falls and Stowe, baptized in St. Paul's as pastor at St. Francis de Sales. And so I really come here in honor of two people, my mom in the class of 1958, St. Mary's, okay, just so you know, uh, but also for the, for the kids who are here from St. Francis de Sales Parish. It's, it's a very dear for me to, to do this as an honoring thing to them and to the hearts of the parents and to this community. But there was always a battle when I was growing up between uh, whether or not my mom would call this St. Mary St. Vincent. I've said the story before. She still will call it that, and she's watching this now. Uh, and yet, Mom, you're going to lose out on this one today. And so will St. Vincent St. Mary, both. Because I thought today was the feast day of St. Agnes. The rest of the world is celebrating St. Agnes. And I should be in red. Agnes was back in the end of the 3rd and the beginning of the 4th century. To have a, a woman proclaimed a saint and she was your age, as, as, who go to school here. She was a teenager, a young teenager. She was bold and brave, and she decided she wanted to give her life, and not just her life, but her body, to, to Jesus. So this is something I wanted to, to share with you, because I thought it was essential. Agnes means lamb, like in Lamb of God, the one who's going to be slain for the sake of, the, of well, of the sacrifice. She was witnessing hope against an authority way before hashtag Me Too kicked in. Agnes was the one when the authority wanted her to do whatever he said. And when that didn't work, and she said, I'm giving my life to Christ, everything went bad for her, point by point, threats against threats. All she had to do was put a little incense at the altar for the Roman gods, and, and he would have kept her alive. That didn't work. He threatened to throw her into a brothel, which basically means she's going to become a prostitute at 13. She wasn't threatened by that. She was going to stay faithful to Christ. No government authority was going to tell her how to be different than what her life and her body was meant for. Sounds familiar in this day and age. Well, the part of the story I didn't know, Agnes would love me to defer for a moment to something about what you're doing here on this Founders Day. I just thought it was like when the first brick came down. I didn't know there was this blessed, uh, how do you say that name? Oh, yeah, Chaminade, right there. I, I, I thought it was like, Charmin or something. I didn't know what it was. And all of a sudden, I realized, wait a minute, how, how did I not know this guy? I said, William Joseph Chaminade is one who was in a time period during the French Revolution area in the 1800s, 18th century in France, who was told, you can continue being a priest only if you agree to sign over your rights, your authority, your church to the French government. Like many parts of the world, that it happened, in, whether it was in Spain or in England and dear old Ireland, there was always an authority who tried to tell us as Catholics, or Christian Catholics, as in this way for us to celebrate uh, a faith of ours that didn't have to be centered in us. They wanted us to be centered in a government. Well, as a shaman, I did something different. Father decided I would refuse to sign the document, even if it means my life will be uh, risked. 
at risk. And it's exactly what, what Agnes did. She refused to go along with the government. Even though it was legal, even though it was right, neither one of them would do what they had to do if it meant they went against the heart of Jesus Christ. Father Sharman decided at this point that even if it meant he had to leave his country, he was thrown in exile, thrown out of France. Like, if you're not going to sign this over, you either be killed or you go over to Spain. He stayed over there for a little while, started a group. My mom used to talk about that here from this school, the sodality. I didn't know what sodality meant. I just thought it was a little social club of tea and crumpets. I don't know. <laughs> then I find out recently this sodality meant it was this group of, he would teach the young women, this is what you do. Be like Mother Mary. Sacrifice your life. Give everything to Christ and give Christ to the world. And they would do it underground, privately. See, he would go back to France one day, but it was eight years that France would forbid the Mass to happen. Right now, we're in this teeny little chapel. And we can't do it in the big uh, gym with everybody else, which is really a better place for us to do than just doing this with the uh, live stream. But we can't do it. Why? Because there's a virus. There's, there's something out there that wants to get us. But none of that's ever changed, not for Agnes and not for Blessed Shamanad either. It was the same story. There's always something out to get us. Now, this virus is different. It's not trying to stop us from being church. But how is it different? It stops us from being who we are, when it be who we are, or coming together as we are. It's a different thing when something's out there that wants to stop us. One time, it may be a disease. Another thing, it may be an illness. It might be a government. We see it within our nation, even this weekend. We speak of things, of, of pro-life things, and it's, it's what we celebrate in a sense of remembrance of who we are, not a celebration of Roe versus Wade. It's about a people who have to do whatever a government says, so we're allowed to kill babies. We are. And if we dare talk against it, they tell me as a priest, what do you think? You better go the way of Blessed Shamanad and shut up or we'll throw you out. If someone like Agnes comes along, a 13-year-old from here, 14, 15, 16, 17, what if, what if you dare to speak up against it? What do you think is going to happen to you within our culture? Oh, some will pat you on the back. Sweet little mom is like my mom. Little 81-year-old. Oh, sorry, mom. <laughs> well, don't worry. She'll be 82 in a couple weeks. All right. But the point is, someone like that will applaud you, maybe. The rest of it? To grow up today in today's society, don't let anybody tell you it's the same thing I had growing up. That's not. It's a lot harder. Because you cannot forget where you come from and where you are. It'll lead you to where you are and where you're supposed to be. I said, Shaman, I never forgot who he was as a priest, as a person in Jesus Christ. Even if it meant he'd be thrown out of his country, even if it meant he had to go underground, even if it meant he risked every breath and decision he made to teach the faith of who we are, and sometimes you've got to be quiet in the background. It doesn't mean you go out there and throw torches and, and offend people and insult people and call them names. And It's not what this is about. It's about love. It's always been a love. It's what Agnes understood when she had a choice to either let people abuse her and just be quiet, get through with it, and we'll let you be free. That's not freedom. It's not freedom. It wasn't for a blessed shaman, it's not for us. When there's ever a risk to any woman or child, whether you're a teenager here or whether you are grown in the womb, when there's a threat against you, you have no right to have anyone squelch you and shut you down. Blessed shaman is here to teach us something. If we're waiting for a miracle for him? I don't think so. The miracle's already there. He spoke up against a regime, a country, a, a government that said it was OK to fill in the blank. Agnes did it. And the threats against her, she held up, as St. Uh, Ambrose wrote about her today, that most girls her age get upset when they get a, a prick of a needle on their finger. In other words, saying that we all complain about something small, insignificant. But she was willing to have a guillotine placed to her neck, a, a blade that would cut her down. They beheaded her. She had a choice to go ahead and enter the brothel, become a prostitute, or die. She said, I choose basically neither. I choose to love Jesus. And in those days, you weren't allowed to do that. So she did die that day. And today's the day we celebrate it. 
If I said, Hashem, I would have known that. Maybe it was his encouragement. His last breath was an intercession of Agnes to help lead him. And now we breathe his name, not just some guy out there, some priest who got thrown out of the country, or some priest who was in the news back then in a different way, but a person who chose to, to be loved by Jesus and to love like Jesus. Isn't that what we're here for? It's what the gospel was and is and always will be about for us. Jesus calling them one by one, the 12 apostles and you and me. He says, come and follow me. And no matter who you are, your name is listed in this book. Maybe not as a direct apostle, but aren't you called to do the same thing in a world that says, oh, we're okay, let's everybody get along. We all believe whatever we want to believe. Let's just be good people. How's that working out for us? All, all the fighting stopped, right? Everybody's calm. Everybody's happily ever after. Whether it's within the womb or in prisons, people who are saints or people who are horrible sinners, Jesus Christ has come for you. Today's the day to remember this. I'm, I'm blessed William Joseph Shamanad, one who would dare to risk everything just to be who he's supposed to be. Remember who you are by what you come from, our ancestors of faith, the Agneses, the William Josephs, Rita Urban Blind, my mom, and all the people who have you here. You're here for a reason. It's what the founders have done for us, to provide for us here, so you can come together and not hide away in some room. Be who you're supposed to be. Remember who loves you first, and be willing to be his love in our world. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us stand now, offer our prayers and petitions to our God who saves. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For our church, Francis our Pope, Edward our Bishop, and all the bishops and priests, we pray to the Lord. For our nation and nations around the world, may God unite us in peace and respect for all human life, we pray to the Lord. For those who feel overwhelmed and are suffering from anxiety and depression during this global pandemic, may they experience the Lord's presence and be filled with his peace, we pray to the Lord. For our St. Vincent, St. Mary family, in celebration of our Marinus founder, Blessed William Joseph Chaminade, may we continue to live by our Marinus charism with faith, family, community, and Mary's mission, we pray to the Lord. That we may all see the Blessed Virgin Mary as a source of comfort and love in those times, and we feel unloved and cared for. We pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, especially those who are suffering from the variants of COVID-19, may they be strengthened by the presence of God, we pray to the Lord. For all of our faithful departed, that they may enjoy perfect happiness in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. And for the prayers that we hold silently in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. May we remember you as well, uh... For those who have died in the Marinist family, uh, for the support, for their desire to choose to be here as well, and thanksgiving for them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray as well for all graduates uh, from uh, St. Vincent St. Mary, the class of 1958, uh, as well for, um, for those who are discerning a life of sacrifice like Agnes and, uh, and Father Shamanad, that they may live a way of serving the world through the gift of the church. We pray to the Lord. Father, you so love us. You've given us your son. May we have the courage to, to receive his love and to share it with all we meet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
administer this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, a work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, my iniquities and cleanse me of all my sins. Peace. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the present oblation, O Lord, which we offer in commemoration of Blessed Shamana, bestow on your faithful, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By the way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support. So that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants who have died from the Meredith family and all alumni whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Peace with you. Thanks for being here. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall.
In the words of uh, Blessed Charminat, he, Father, wrote this to keep us focused on things and the challenges you go through that some of us as adults don't understand always. And some of us who've been around longer than others just think, oh, just another day. But you have many challenges, but many graces. Uh, Father said, go with simplicity. Do not worry about the troublesome or disconcerting things you will experience. Go with simplicity. Let us pray. May the sacraments we have received, O Lord, in commemoration of Blessed Charminade, sanctify our minds and hearts that we may merit to be made that we may merit to be made sharers in the divine nature through Christ our Lord. Uh, just a reminder, I'm sure you guys are all getting ready on your calendar on Monday. I won't come back, uh, guys, but uh, Monday, but I will be back in March. Uh, but Monday is uh, the feast day of that's right, St. Francis de Sales. So he is the patron of spiritual directors. I'm the spiritual director at St. Mary's Seminary for our diocese. But he has is a great gift. And that night, uh, a beautiful priest, much like Charminade himself, uh, is uh, Father Jeremy Mertzweiler will become uh, uh, brought into the, the role of pastor. He's been given that already as administrator and into the pastor, but he'll be installed as pastor on Monday night. Pray for him and his joy. If you haven't met him, you have to. He's uh, he's joy, he's love, he's a witness of Christ in the world. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.